they could fight each other. Benavides and Crawford. Whoa. Whoa. It's, it's been difficult for Crawford to get the Spence fight done. It's been difficult for him to get the Canelo fight done. So his other option is probably Bruce Ellis. So a while back, Floyd Miller came out on Fight Hype stating that he would like to see Crawford fight David Benavidez or Jerron Boots Ennis. Now, obviously, when it came to the David Benavidez fight, I already made a video on that. I'm going to leave a link for that video in the comment section below. I told you guys that's the equivalence of Floyd Mayweather back in the day moving up to fight Andre Ward at 168. It doesn't make sense. Floyd Mayweather did a whole lot of things, and even he didn't do that. You see, if Floyd did move up to fight Andre Ward back in the day, then it will make sense for Floyd to tell Crawford to do something crazy like that. But if Floyd never did anything silly like that, why will he tell Crawford to do that? Now, when it came to the Jerron Ennis fight, that's a completely different story. This fight actually makes sense. Even though Crawford and Jerron Ennis are in two different stages of their careers, just like Floyd and Errol Spence back in the day, at least they are in the same division. They are not three weight divisions apart or three to four like Crawford and David Benavidez. Now recently, Terrence Crawford assistant coach, Bernie the Boxer, who's like a brother to Crawford, he responded to Floyd, where he told Floyd, if you want Crawford to fight Jerron Boos Ennis, then put the money up. Put the money where your mouth is. Give Crawford 20 million to fight Jerron Ennis, and he will fight him. Put up or shut up. Now Bernie did put more spice on it. However, that's basically what he was saying. Now, here's exactly what Bernie the Boxer had to say to Floyd. Check it out. You know, Boots got a, a big following in America. Boots is a young, undefeated guy with uh, worlds of talent. You know, when you look at him in the eye test, you know, this guy looked like a Roy Jones. You know, this guy looked like 2.0. You understand? So, um, you know, I think, you know, like I say, you see Bud, you're like, damn, this guy could give him a lot of trouble. You know, so I think in the people's eyes, you know, that's, that'll be the fight to make. But, uh, you know, for ain't nobody trying to put up the money. See, you, they said what Mayweather said. He said all this, but you was a billionaire. Take, you already been a promoter. They said you was a promoter. You've been a promoter or however. Well, then won't you do it then? You put up the fight then. Make the money for the fight. Pay them boys for the fight. You was a billionaire, right? So certainly, I don't know. I wouldn't say 100 million. Plus, you got people that'll help you. I'm sure because you Mayweather, so you have to put up some money, but it ain't going to be nothing to bankrupt you. You understand? So, Bud get $25 million or $20 million or Boost get $4 million. You know what I'm saying? Boost ain't made no $4 million. So, I'm saying, and he getting a shot at the Undisputed Championship. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You know, Mayweather said this. If if Mayweather's talking all that, then put the, put the money up because ain't nobody putting the money up. Let's just see. Let's see what Eddie Hearn and them could do. Now, now all the talking is now it's big time talk. We're gonna put the talking to the test now. And I heard him say this too. Like I say, you know, and, and if uh if uh we'll come up with the money to fight Crawford then. You know, they've been saying you got a lot of money, you got a lot of money, and I've been hearing a lot of rumors that say that you're wasting a lot of money. Well then waste some of that money on Crawford then. Throw some of that money Crawford's way to make that make that fight happen, you know. It's about the money. I, I, like I said, you know, as far as everybody keeps saying about the money and I understand money is important. But like I say, when you when you when when you feel like Bud Crawford had accomplished so much, like I'm saying, what I'm going to get out of fighting this guy besides the people want to I know you ain't never going to be enough for the people. The people ain't never going to be satisfied, you know. So like I say, if everybody's so hyped on this guy. And everything, which is going to be a big fight, then you got to pay. You got to pay the kid to, to make the weight. You got to pay him to fight, man. You got to pay. It's just the way that is. Not, Lord bless him. He has not accomplished nothing yet. You know, Crawford is a as a veteran champion. You know what I mean? So, and you got you got to pay him. Ain't nobody ain't nobody throwing no money the way it couldn't have been. I heard him say that Bud said he's not looking his way, but uh, like I say, why is not he not looking his way? Because either he want to move up which is his right, which he said he wanted to do. Or they ain't paying him enough money to grind it out and and uh, and do that. You know what I mean? So it just is what it is. But again, I, I, I want to see. Let's just see. Let's see what Eddie Hearn and them can do. Now, now all the talking is, 
Now it's big time talk. We're going to put the talking to the test now. If Crawford is willing to fight Jerron Boos Ennis for only like $20 million, that's nothing. That's pocket change to Floyd. He could fight in an exhibition and make more than that, then invest that in this fight where he will make his money back. At least I think so. Look, one thing for sure. Crawford can ask for $20 million to fight Jerron Ennis because he already made more than $20 million against Errol Spence. And he even made $10 million guarantee against David, a guy no one knew. So to fight Jerron Ennis for $20 million, Crawford has more than the rights to ask for that number because he already made more than that number. This ain't like Canelo asking for $200 million to fight David Benavidez because Canelo never made anything near 200 million. Canelo biggest payday till his day is actually 45 million. Now that's a lot, but that's way off from 200 million. Crawford on the other hand, he's asking for a number he already made. To be more specific, Crawford team is asking for less than what Crawford already made to fight Jerron Boos Ennis. Additionally, for the people that say Crawford is ducking Jerron Ennis like Canelo is ducking Benavidez. First of all, Crawford already fought his David Benavidez. He fought Jose Benavidez. He already fought Sean Porter. He beat Errol Spence for undisputed. Canelo have yet to do that. All Canelo did at 168 was steal David Benavidez's belt in order to have an easier route to undisputed. That's why he skipped undisputed at 160 to become undisputed at 168. Canelo have yet to fight his Errol Spence, David Benavidez. So let's not compare Jerron Ennis to David Benavidez. Jerron Ennis is more like David Morrell at 168 for Canelo. We all know if Canelo beats David Benavidez, nobody really going to be tripping off him not fighting David Morrell. But imagine if Canelo actually beat Benavidez the way Crawford beat Errol Spence. First of all, nobody really going to be asking him to fight David Morrell, especially in our old media. But imagine if Canelo comes out and says, Floyd and PBC give me $35 million and I'm willing to fight David Morrell. We all know PBC will jump on that in a heartbeat. Well, that's exactly equivalent to what Crawford team just did. You see, while Canelo is asking for $200 million to fight David Benavidez, more than five times his biggest payday. On the other hand, Crawford is asking for less than his biggest payday, not even 1x his biggest payday, to fight Jerron Ennis. In fact, I will ask for more than 20 to $25 million to fight Boos Ennis. If I was but... I think that's a low number. For that type of risk, you got to bring some serious money on the back end. However, that's how serious Crawford team are about fighting anybody. They willing to fight Jerron Ennis if they are offered the right number. And Crawford team just told Floyd Mayweather to put the money up since he want to see the fight. Now, only time will tell if Floyd Mayweather and PBC will do exactly that or not. One thing we do know, PBC executive Steven Espinoza, he revealed that they never sent Crawford an offer to fight Jerron Boos Ennis, which directly debunks any duck talk. Clearly, there's nobody ducking anybody here. Now, I'm going to play the audio at the end of this video and explain it before that. However, for the moment in time, it was interesting to hear Leonard Ellaby and Floyd Milder say that a fight that makes sense for Crawford is Jerron Boos Ennis. However, with the next breath, they said Javante versus Devin Haney fight doesn't make sense right now. Was was there any uh, talks at all with, with Team Haney after both of their last fights in April and May? Any talks? Yeah, like, uh, you know, just because they after the, both of their fights, their, their schedules were cleared and they're the two top lightweights. But it don't was happen it, if, the, yeah, people, yeah. if the fans don't understand, you know, and I get frustrated, you know, um, I mean, it even if it don't, yeah. it don't work like that. I, and as I would say, some of those fights aren't ready at the moment. That's the best way to, to put it. Some of those fights aren't ready at the moment. 
And I think you can read between the lines why. Yeah, at the end of the day, people, this is prize fighting. Terrence Crawford, as a fan, I want to see him fight Boots. That's the fight that I want to see. I, I want to see that fight. Um, if, if you're Team Crawford, though, do you say, yeah, great fight, but that guy, he hasn't done enough, that kind of thing. You know, he hasn't done enough to earn that level of fight with the pound well, for pound. Well, everybody team. deserves an opportunity. Every, Terrence had to get an opportunity, um, you know, but uh, Terrence Crawford is a terrific fighter. But I would like to see him give a Boots an opportunity. I think that you got two terrific fighters. You know, um, Boots is what, 25, 26? 26. He's, he's 10 years younger than him. He's motivated. People say, oh, well, he he's Boots is ready. Boots is ready, ready. Well, I would like, and all of the fans would like, for Javante to give Devin Haney an opportunity as well. Now, what I can't comprehend is the fact that Devin Haney versus Javante mega fight is bigger than Crawford versus Jerron Ennis. I mean, both fighters are rivals. They have history together. Tank versus Haney is like Errol Spence versus Crawford. The fight makes all of the sense in the world. But according to them, the fight doesn't make sense right now. However, they think Crawford versus Boos Ennis makes sense. How does that add up when Crawford already fought his tank? When Crawford already fought his Haney? When Crawford already beat his rival, Errol Spence? No difference than when Floyd Mayweather beat his rival, Manny Pacman Pacquiao. What did Floyd Mayweather do after that? Did Floyd Mayweather fight Errol Spence? Which was his Jerron Ennis at that time? Errol Spence was on the come up, just like Jerron Ennis today to Crawford. Of course not. Floyd didn't fight Errol Spence. He had a retirement type of fight. However, when it came to Crawford, even though Crawford already beat his Manny Pacquiao, his rival Errol Spence, Floyd and Leonard Ellaby think it makes sense for Crawford to fight Jerron Ennis. Well, if it does make sense to them, are they going to put up the money? Like Crawford team said, all they want is 20 to 25 million and Crawford will be willing to fight Bruce Ennis. I think that's a great deal. Additionally, if Floyd and Leonard Ellaby going to say Crawford, who already became undisputed and became a superstar, knocking out Errol Spence. If the fight with Jerron Ennis makes sense, then clearly Javante versus Devin Haney makes even more sense. If not, that's a direct contradiction. Crawford versus Jerron Ennis is not the biggest fight in boxing. However, you best believe Javante versus Devin Haney is the biggest fight in boxing. If not number one, it's without a doubt number two, right behind Canelo versus Benavidez. Now Crawford versus Boots will still be a big fight, don't get me wrong. However, Crawford versus Canelo will be even a bigger fight. So that fight even makes more sense than that. The best way I could put it is that Crawford versus Boots makes just as much sense as Floyd Mayweather versus Errol Spence back in the day. But Floyd didn't fight Errol Spence, did he? The reason why, because it didn't make sense to Floyd. So why will it make sense to Crawford to fight Boots? That's a rhetorical question. Nevertheless, when it comes to Crawford versus Jerron Ennis, Jerron Ennis reminds me so much of Crawford. I'm talking about style-wise, they like mirror each other. I know a lot of people compare Jerron Ennis to Roy Jones. They call him Roy Jones 2.0 because he has so much talent. But I think Jerron Ennis is like Crawford 2.0. He has his own style, don't get me wrong. But to me, Boos Ennis is more like Crawford than Roy Jones. And that's a compliment, it's not an insult. Crawford is just as great. Roy Jones is obviously serified as top five, one of the greatest fighters of all time. However, skill-wise, even Roy Jones said, Crawford is top five of all time. But back to the topic at hand. The reason why Crawford versus Errol Spence, I mean, Jerron Ennis fight never came to fruition was because of the Errol Spence fight. The Errol Spence fight 
kind of blocked the Jaron Ennis fight from coming to fruition before and after they fought. Let me explain. Now, the business plays its part in the sport of boxing. Before Crawford fought Errol Spence, they negotiated back in 2022. However, the fight ended up falling apart. Crawford didn't have any opponent. He went and fought on BLK Prime. Now, at that time, BLK Prime actually reached out to Jerron Ennis to offer him to fight Crawford on BLK Prime. The problem with that, Jerron Ennis was signed to Showtime. So when Espinoza got involved, he asked BLK Prime, do you guys have Buzz signed to you guys? They said, no, we are investors. We want to pay to host Crawford versus Ennis on BLK Prime. And we are willing to overpay to do so because we are new to the game. Now, when Espinoza heard that, he wasn't a fan of that because that's a direct competition to Showtime or PBC. The way the sport of boxing business works, they got to look out for the business of the company, not just the fighter. Therefore, when BLK Prime offered Jerron Ennis to fight Crawford on BLK Prime, Jerron Ennis turned it down because at that time he was signed to Showtime and Espinoza didn't think it was a good idea. For Jerron Ennis to leave Showtime to fight Crawford on BLK Prime, Espinoza didn't give Jerron Ennis his blessings to do so. So Espinoza told BLK Prime, you guys can kick rocks. If you guys don't have Crawford signed, we don't need to talk. If we want to make the Crawford versus Ennis fight, we are gonna make it here on Showtime or PBC. We don't need y'all basically. Now, BLK rebuttal was, we willing to pay more money for the fight. In fact, we are willing to overpay in order to get our foot in the game. On the other hand, Espinoza said that wasn't true. BLK Prom wasn't bringing money to the table either. They was bringing nothing. They just wanted to get involved for no reason. Now that's hard to believe because at that time, BLK Prom did pay Crawford 10 million guarantee to fight David who had no name. So surely they had money to blow. And if they gave Crawford 10 million to fight a nobody, the million dollar question, how much BLK Prime was willing to pay Crawford to fight somebody, especially if that somebody name was Jerron Ennis. If they gave him 10 million for David, they can easily give him 15 to 20 million for Jerron Ennis. That's why Crawford had no problem listening to BLK Prime. He told BLK Prime, I'm willing to fight Jerron Ennis. He accepted the offer, but obviously due to business conflict, Jerron Ennis did it. That's not Crawford's fault though. It's important to mention Espinoza at that time actually called Crawford to see if he was signed to BLK Prime and Crawford told him, no, I'm not. You can talk to me about the Jerron Ennis fight. You don't have to talk to nobody else. You can talk to me directly. What are you offering? So Crawford was willing to fight Jerron Ennis on Showtime too. But Espinoza revealed that would have had been a conflict of interest since at that time the Errol Spence versus Crawford negotiations failed apart and Errol Spence had instructed PBC to make the Crawford fight. Now, even though Errol Spence was in negotiations to fight Keith Thurman, for some reason, Espinoza said that they did not want to negotiate the Jerron versus Crawford fight in the meantime because it would have had been a conflict of interest and it would have had came in the way of making Errol Spence versus Crawford fight come to fruition. Due to that, Espinoza never offered Crawford the Jerron Ennis fight, which means back then, Crawford versus Jerron Ennis fight could have had taken place as Crawford agreed to fight Jerron Ennis. However, Jerron Ennis team did not agree to fight. They turned down the fight due to conflict of interest. Fast forward to when Crawford fought Errol Spence. Obviously, Crawford beat Errol Spence to become undisputed. However, Crawford couldn't fight Jerron Ennis after that, even if he wanted to, due to the fact Errol Spence activated his rematch clause. And because Showtime went out of business, they told Crawford, can you extend 
the rematch clause. Crawford agreed. They told Crawford, will you fight Errol Spence at 154? Crawford agreed. However, Errol Spence still pulled out anyways to steal Crawford opponent Fundura. Now, in the meantime, while Crawford had a rematch clause and was negotiating the rematch with Errol Spence, he got stripped of the IBF title, which was really strange. What made it even more strange, Crawford was stuck with Errol Spence rematch clause, so he couldn't fight Jerron Ennis even if he wanted to. On top of that, the WBC mandatory was due first, then the WBA, then the IBF. However, the IBF stripped Crawford immediately while he was in negotiations for the Errol Spence rematch, being stuck in the rematch clause two months after he beat Errol Spence, the IBF wrongfully stripped Crawford. Now, some people believe that was done on purpose. The purpose of that was so Crawford doesn't take the fight to purse bid if PBC doesn't offer him what he wants. By doing so, Crawford can get Saudi Arabia involved. And we all know Prince Turkey, if he gets into the purse bid, he will outbid everybody by a long shot. So people believe that that was strategic to block Crawford from doing something like that. Another explanation, Jerron and his contract with his old promoter was up. In the contract, it says, if the promoter could get Jerron and it's a title shot, then automatically the contract will get extended. And that's how Jerron Ennis ended up in a lawsuit with his promoter. So that well could be it. You got to realize Jerron Ennis in the contract, it said that he was supposed to fight four times the first year, four times the second year, three times the third year, and three times the fourth year. However, that wasn't the case for multiple reasons. The main reason is because everybody's ducking Jerron Ennis. So because the contract deadline was already up, on top of that, the promoter couldn't fulfill the terms on the contract. Jerron Ennis was supposed to be a free agent. But for some odd reason, he automatically became a champion. He got elevated. He didn't even fight for it. Due to that, his contract automatically got extended by default. So Jerron Ennis felt played. That's why Jerron Ennis ended up suing his old promoter. Jerron Ennis felt as if he already let things slide because the promoter didn't fulfill the terms on the contract, which to automatically have his contract extended, even though he didn't get to fight any big name. He was still inactive, but his contract got extended. That will throw anybody off. So I can feel Jerron Ennis. That's why when you guys throw these ducking accusations, whichever way, Jerron Ennis way or Crawford way, that's really premature, especially in this case in particular due to all of the moving elements on the chessboard. That's why I told you guys, there's nobody ducking nobody in this case. There's a whole lot of things going on, and that's why the fight did not come to fruition, or it may never come to fruition. I mean, Bernie the Boxer made a good point when he said that Jerron Ennis was under the WBO rankings. He was ranked number three when Virgil and some other fighter turned down the fight with Crawford as the mandatories. So Jerron Ennis could have had his title shot through the WBO just like Sean Porter, right? However, Jerron Ennis, just like Danny Garcia, he ended up leaving the WBO rankings and he went under the IBF to get the Errol Spence fight, perhaps. Whatever it may be, I don't think that's Jerron Ennis doing. I think that's more so his team. I don't even think Jerron Ennis knows what's going on. One thing I do know though, Jerron Ennis needs to take charge of his career. Perhaps it was a good idea to leave Showtime to do a one-off on BLK Prime to fight Crawford because that way he would have put himself in position if he would have beat Crawford to fight Errol Spence for Undisputed. Remember, Stephen Fulton did the same thing to fight Inouye on ESPN. It backfired because he lost. However, if he would have had won, he would have became a star. I told you guys before, Jerron Ennis is such in a tough position. He's being avoided so much. He should be taking 
anything that comes across his table. That's what Devin Haney had to do in order to get into the position he's in today. I mean, he let the Blair to Flair get away, a free payday and a quick buzz to knock him out and look good doing it, right? However, he didn't take that opportunity when it was presented to him. And right now, at the moment in time, Connor Ben is calling out Jerron Ennis. Before, I was thinking Connor Ben is cloud chasing Jerron Ennis. However, right now, I'm starting to think Connor Ben is dead serious about the fight. This is Jerron Ennis, Kell Brook moment. Just like when Errol Spence went overseas to beat Kell Brook, this is the same thing. This is the same opportunity. Jerron Ennis needs to be jumping on this ASAP. Now, as I was making this video, great news came out that Jerron Ennis has officially signed a multi-fight deal with Matchroom, Eddie Hearn. So, that's a good news. That means Conobin is not bluffing. He's not clout chasing. He's only hinting that perhaps Eddie Hearn already guaranteed Jerron Ennis the fight. That's why Jerron Ennis signed with Eddie Hearn to begin with. Because on this interview I just saw of Jerron Ennis talking about why he signed with Eddie Hearn, Jerron Ennis explained how all of the fighters from 140 to 147 to 154 all pretty much refused to fight him. However, his goal is to become undisputed at 147. But how can you become undisputed when the fighters don't want to fight you? The reason why Jerron Ennis left PBC is not because PBC didn't want to give him these fights. Absolutely not. It's because PBC fighters, Stenionius, Mario Barrios, even Tim Zhu, Jerron Ennis revealed, etc., etc., etc. These guys didn't want to fight Jerron Ennis. So it's sad, Jerron Ennis has all of the talent in the world, but in this day and age, talent is not enough. You can get blacklisted if the fighters don't want to fight you. Since Crawford activated his mandatory to move up to 154 to fight Fandura, most likely Crawford's next opponent is the WBA champion, and they're going to unify with the WBO title as well. That means all of the belts at 147 are gonna go vacant. So Mario Barrios is gonna grab a title, Keith Thurman, and Stanionius. The WBO title most likely is gonna head to top rank. Therefore, even though Jerron Ennis just signed with Matchroom, sadly, that's not gonna do him any good when it comes to becoming undisputed. Because in the NBA, in the NFL, or any sport, the best teams are forced to fight each other or play against each other. The winning teams are forced to play against each other. But in the sport of boxing, these fighters are not forced to fight each other. The winners are not forced to fight each other. They can avoid one another if they want to. That's my point. So imagine Jerron Ennis is the LeBron James of boxing. But let's say Jerron Ennis is playing in basketball. However, other teams can avoid playing against LeBron James. They don't have to play against LeBron James. Even though he stays winning, the other teams who's winning don't have to play him. They can avoid him and still get to the ring. Basically, LeBron team can have the best team in basketball history. And he still is not going to be able to play for the championship ring. Why? Because the other teams don't want to play him. And that's the problems Jerron Ennis has been facing his entire career. Yeah, he signed with Matchroom, but that's not going to help him get undisputed. Because even while Jerron Ennis was over there on PBC, the Mario Barrios, the Stenionius, they didn't want to fight him. So what makes you think they're going to fight him now when he's already on another network? This is the problem in the sport of boxing. It's not the networks, it's not the promoters, it's actually the fighters. If the fighters are willing to fight, the fights are going to happen. It has nothing to do with the networks or promoters. So what Eddie Hearn can do for Jerron Ennis though, is give him lucrative fights against Conor Ben, Virgil Ortiz, even the Matias fight. But some of these fights couldn't even happen on PBC like the Matias fight. 
he left PBC because they only offered him the Jerron Ennis fight. That was due to nobody wanted to fight Jerron Ennis on PBC at 147, and nobody wanted to fight Matias at PBC at 140, so PBC tried to make that fight happen. If that couldn't happen on PBC, then I don't see it happening on the zone. However, what I can see happen is the Conor Ben fight, hopefully the Virgil Ortiz fight, or better yet, the Terrence Bud Crawford fight. Eddie Hearn can make the Crawford fight happen if he gives Crawford the number he's asking for, which is 20 to 25 million. The only problem is the fight is going to have to be at 154 since Crawford is already preparing to fight at 154. Crawford already said he's not moving back down to 147 or he's not staying at 147. Due to that, Jerron Ennis is going to have to move up to 154 to fight a Crawford. However, that can't be too much of a problem because Jerron Ennis wanted to fight Tim Zhu. And if he wants to fight Virgil Ortiz, that fight has to be at 154 as well. So if Jerron Ennis is willing to fight those guys at 154, he shouldn't have a problem fighting Crawford at 154. Nevertheless, Crawford team let it be known they willing to fight Jerron Ennis for 20 to 25 million. That's what Crawford team told Floyd Mayweather to do if he want to see Crawford fight Boots. Now what Floyd Mayweather should have had done was sign Jerron Ennis by guaranteeing him the Crawford fight that way. Floyd would have been able to hit two birds with one stone. San Jerron Ennis, which is something Floyd been wanting to do. At the same time, he gets to see Crawford versus Boos Ennis. However, at the moment in time, there's a new player on the board, and that's Eddie Hearn. He can deliver the fight if he offered Crawford the right amount of money he asked for. We shall see if he does so. So with the opinions out of the door and the facts laid out on the table, go ahead and drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe below and to be continued on the next episode of Akhi TV. Peace out. Wa alaykum as -salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Did you guys send Crawford an offer to fight Jerry Ennis? Um, you know, there's there was a lot of conversations. You know, it doesn't. It's not really the way the business works. Like you, you don't. Everyone's like, well, you know, it was an offer set. You, you don't sort of. I mean, there are people who do this, and it's not very effective. But you don't just, you know, out of the blue, find a guy, send him a cold email saying, hey, you know, you want to take this fight? No, like it's a conversation. It's like, okay, what do you want to do next? You know. Uh, you know, Terrence, you want to do this, you want to do that, what's the plan? I got a call, you know, and there's been so much misinformation about this. BLK calls one day, says, you know, we want to do Crawford versus uh, versus Boots. I said, okay, um, you got to deal with Crawford. You know, I, I know what Boots' plans are, you know, and I can make arrangements and feel safe that. So you're telling me you're bringing Crawford to the table. No, we we don't we don't actually have Crawford. I'm like, okay, well, what are you, what are you paying? Are you what are you, you're not bringing Crawford, so you're bringing money. No, we just want the fight to happen. I'm like, all right. So basically, you're a guy off the street calling me cold and saying, I'd like, I'd like to see this fight. I like then I talk to Crawford. Crawford says, I don't have anything with BLK. You know, you don't need to talk to them if you want to make a boots fight. Talk to me. You know what? Okay, talk to you. Now this all happened. You know, against the backdrop of we were still in the Spence negotiation. Gotcha. You know, so it wasn't really a, a time to be saying, okay, like I'm not going to do that to Errol. Errol had given all of us specific instructions. I don't want anything other than proper fight. So I'm not going to go in and try to stick boots in. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. we were 80 percent there. So it didn't even make sense to talk about Crawford. You know, we talked to Crawford's team and said, okay, you know, down the line we'll talk about boots. But at that particular time, he said, no, he's like, don't worry about be okay. If, you know, we're going to talk to Boots, like, you know, you can facilitate, you know, Boots, you can talk to both sides and, you know, figure that out. So that's, that's where that whole thing ended up. Like, Boots didn't turn down an offer, you know, there wasn't a be okay offer that you know, anybody blew up, um, you know, and, and neither did Crawford run away for an offer. It just, the timing wasn't right. And he said, okay, well, why didn't you offer, you know, uh, boots to Crawford after that. Well, there's a rematch option. 
right? Yeah, absolutely. And then until pretty recently, everyone thought the rematch was going to happen. Right. So, look, you know, certainly, you know, Crawford knows that there's a potential for the boots fight, you know, and he's, he's looking around. He's going to decide what he wants to do.